Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Chill Time with Kelly. I am your host, Kelly. And today's episode, actually, it has been six months since I launched Chill Time. I recorded my first episode in March. And it was actually at the beginning of March when I first recorded it. So technically, I launched it on March 19th. Today is only September 5th, but I recorded my very first episode on March 5th. And I kept it a secret and I kept it in my archives on my phone up until I actually launched in March 19th because... I had so much back end stuff that I had to do because when I first launched, I had a lot of different pressures in between um, recording my first episode, then editing, and then creating my cover art, figuring out how to launch it and everything. But it has been six months since that first episode. And Honestly, so much has changed. So, so much has changed. I listened back on that very first episode and I am really just thinking to myself, I sound so staticky, but I am giving myself um, grace for that. And I saw this post somewhere saying like, oh, your first podcast is going to be bad. Your first job it could be bad. Your first house buying experience could potentially be not the best. And all these little firsts that obviously could be bad. But if you don't take your firsts, you'll never get to your 100th. And I flipped out when I saw that episode because it is so, so true. It is so true. So... And this episode is going to be a reflection of my six-month podcast experience and everything that I have learned because I also have gotten quite a few messages from people who ask me, how do I release a podcast? How do I do this? How did you do that? Well, I'm not going to get into all, all the details because there is something in the works behind those questions, but I will answer my own personal experience and what I have learned. So one thing that I have learned is with podcasting, the best way for me was to sound natural. So the way I'm talking, the way that you're hearing my voice now and the way that I'm talking, it's very natural. It's my natural voice. I am just going off bullet points points that I wrote, but it's not a full, full on script. And I've talked about this in, I think, one of my earlier episodes on why I don't use a script, but I will touch upon it again. The reason why I personally do not use a script is because I sound extremely robotic when I do that. It was literally on my very first episode, I created like this like five, 10 page script um which honestly it was really easy it only took me two hours but then when i tried reading off that script there were so many mistakes that i made like oh i missed a wood there or i missed this point i missed that point why does it sound like i'm speeding through this sentence line right here as i'm going back and editing and listening to this so That was when I realized that scripts were not going to work for me and I needed to figure out a different way to um, outline my podcast. And that's when I started with bullet points. So the bullet point process, I'm not going to get too into it. Like I said, has something special in the works works, um, for the podcast realm if you are interested in starting a podcast. But the way that I help with my bullet points is that I have one main bullet And then I touch upon what I want to talk about. And none of them are in full sentences. And that really helps me because for me to be able to sound natural on a podcast, because number one, it's 
recording a podcast by yourself of and you know you're just looking at a screen and you're just talking to yourself i mean if you're watching this on youtube and then you can see like my hand gestures this is legit how i naturally talk anyway <laughs> so it's already hard enough at talking to yourself sometimes on camera and unless and when i have guests it becomes way way easier and way more natural natural um but when i'm talking to myself and i'm not actually getting you know a response back unless i'm responding to myself it's not that easy so that's just kind of why i do the bullet points so at least i can physically see what my next touch point is going to be without going it completely with a blind eye but that's another thing that it might be kind of contradicting is that also sometimes i don't have a script and the reason why sometimes i don't have a script is because when i have an urgent podcast episode i want to record like this idea suddenly comes out of the blue and then i sit down at my laptop and start uh drafting out the podcast i suddenly get writer's block and then i suddenly don't know what i'm going to be talking about and then i think this was maybe like my second or third episode that i recorded by myself i don't remember you guys have to look back on on um and i also have to look back on that episode um because i can't even remember the title but anyway um so that certain podcast idea came to my head out of the blue i was just watching a video and then that podcast episode suddenly came in the blue and i was like this would be a really good topic for a podcast so i automatically sat down on my computer started drafting it and then i started getting writer's block after only 5 minutes in of just going at it and then suddenly it made me realize wait kelly why don't you try this without a script if you get ideas out of the blue and you just have so many so many ideas flowing out of your mind that you don't even know where to start and that's when i suddenly realized i am naturally good at talking on the spot cuz i've been put on the spot so so many times with my jobs like in the past So why don't you try a podcast episode that you are just putting yourself on the spot you would have no idea you have no script and then you just go for it and I gave it a try and honestly it turned out really really good and I think it's now that I'm looking back on it um on my podcasters like app on my phone um It was actually like my second most popular episode and honestly like that just really showed that that style really really worked for me. The title is kind of long so I'm not going to butcher the the title display. It's my own episode, but I will look on it later. But anyway, so de- yeah, definitely sounding natural was one thing I learned about being a podcaster. Number 2 um having a solid foundation topic really helped me because my main main topic is mental health. And then from there there's so many different subtopics that I could talk about and so many episodes that I can be creative about. And I think that has really really helped me in all aspects when it comes to podcasting and then creating my content around my podcast it just literally makes it so much easier because i have an idea i have what i want to write about and i have everything ready to go and everything is good to go So that was one thing that I definitely picked up as well. And another thing that I picked up is to definitely be in a community. Now, my community of entrepreneurs and all these lovely amazing people definitely pushed me 
into doing well. And the reason why I say that is this community is full of podcasters, full of entrepreneurs, and everyone under the boat. And they just have really the most encouraging words of wisdom that I have ever experienced. Because in my own friend group, not everyone is open to being so open online, per se. Hey, and I totally get that. Um, there, If you're an introvert, obviously you probably know what I'm talking about. If you're listening to this and you're an introvert. But I needed to be in a community with people who were striving for something similar or the same. So I was striving and I'm still striving for a successful podcast show and it is going awesome. And a lot of my friends in this community are also striving for the exact same thing. And it really, really helps. Like my mentor literally has helped me so much when, at that point when I wanted to watch my own podcast. She gave me tips, ideas, how to do it, what to do. And honestly, without that push, I don't even know if I would actually do it in all honesty. And the reason why I say that, <coughs> excuse me, um, I was very, very sheltered in kind of a way. I put myself out there and it didn't turn out that good. So that was when I turned into like this community that I just found online. And it was probably the biggest breath of fresh air that I needed. And through their help, their conversations, posts, mentorship and everything, I was easily able to get out of my shell again and then re-put myself online. I have like new boundaries and new filters on what I put online, but I am way more open to doing what I love. And that is inspiring others. There is with their mental health struggles and obviously to help soothe them just to know that they are not alone. And Obviously, like I said, there there's a ton of things like going on behind the scenes. I have so many ideas how to go about this, but that will be more details in a later episode and especially on my Instagram too. So, and then, oh, oh yeah, this is another thing I learned about um when it comes to podcasting, um promoting your podcast. Social media was is definitely the key, and this was a healthier boundary with social media. So instead of me mindlessly scrolling through Instagram, TikTok, all of that kind of jazz, um, I don't do it much anymore, but I definitely use it to promote my show. So that created a much healthier relationship with social media because I've been able to do X, Y, and Z successfully, be happy, and still do something that I love, which is science. And it is just so, so amazing. Like the amount of people that I have been able to inspire. I am being played in 10 different countries right now. Now, um, I just made it to Poland and the Philippines, which is honestly so cool. Like, oh my God, oh, I'm so happy. Like, like at the very beginning, my whole audience was just in the United States. And um, it eventually grew into Europe and then into Asia and as well as in Africa, which honestly, I cannot believe that it has made it that far. And honestly, I am so happy and I will be thanking all you guys for listening as well. Now, another thing that I've been learning about podcasting is, okay, well, this I think is probably a no-brainer, but not everyone's going to like my show, which is totally, totally fine. I've gotten hate messages. I have gotten people who tell me, oh, you think you're an expert? Then what is with this problem right here? And honestly, I'm not a therapist. I'm not licensed. This show 
is to inspire people to keep on going. I say it in every single episode. If you need medical help or you're really, really struggling, get professional help. These, my show is to give tips on what I have learned that works for me. Obviously, everyone is different. Everyone copes with mental health differently. Everyone copes with pain differently. And my show, the purpose is to show those people who are, tr- who are struggling, who feel like they cannot talk to anybody, that they are not alone. I was in the exact same boat as you guys. Guys, if you're are feeling so sheltered, but you're also still struggling with mental health and you feel like you have no one to talk to. I have, and obviously, like, if you have suicidal thoughts or anything like that, please, please, please get professional help. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Get professional help. Therapy. um, uh, Go see a psychiatrist. Like, get the help that you need. (laughs) That is the biggest, biggest tip that I would have for you guys. It's because definitely when I was struggling and also feeling sheltered, I literally didn't want to talk to anybody. And I didn't want, you know, this or that to happen. Like it was just too, too much. But the biggest part, you made it out in the end. That is really all that matters, that you made it out to the end and you didn't give up. So with that being said, this is going to be the end of this episode of Chill Time with Kelly. Thank you so, so much for listening, and I will see you next time on Chill Time.